There's no music in this video because I want you to pay attention. Avery, can you say hi? Hi! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. For all you people that watch my videos without subscribing, you're terrible people. And it's about time you make that change and hit that subscribe button and click that ringer thing so that you can know every time I post a new video because that would be wonderful. Wouldn't it be? You want to say hi? Hi. Okay. Avery just said hi to everyone. Now, um, today I want to just talk to you guys about boas a little bit. So starting from babies, you look at this little guy over here, a little girl. She's so cute. Uh, and I find that when you... I'm going to mostly probably compare to ball pythons because people's first pets are usually a corn snake, a ball python, or a boa. And uh, I keep mostly boas. And when I compare them to ball pythons, do you see the way that this snake does not really seem afraid? She's just looking around and exploring, and she's not scared. And this is one of the things that I like about boas right from the beginning. They seem to have a lot more confidence. Her name's Naomi, and uh, she's hanging out here with my Uncle David. He's visiting from the States. This is his first time holding a snake. And uh, as you can see, she's... A couple months old, three months old probably, and she's super sweet. I can reach in and touch her and go near her, and she's not really scared. She's not aggressive or anything, and I attribute this to basically from the time they're born, I uh, take them and rinse their like embryonic sac off of them and play with them and hold them. I usually set a timer for 15 minutes and hold the babies every few days, 15 minutes each, and that just tames them nicely so that they behave like Naomi does here. Uh, out of the last batch of 17, there was only one aggressive one, and if you just click the little box, I'll show you how to tame an aggressive baby right from its early stages. And now, introducing Sophie. Sophie is the first albino boa that I bought about six years ago, and I raised her from a baby. And as you can see, she's quite calm. As almost all of my boas are, I'd say every boa that I've raised will behave like this as it gets older. So you can see she's even calmer than the baby was. So a big misconception that people have with boas is that, oh, they get big and then they're going to bite you or they get scary or whatever. But the truth is that the way that the snake behaves as a child will be the same way that it will behave as an adult. If it's not striky and nasty or scared, then it's going to grow into an adult that is not striky or scared either. I spend a lot of time doing stuff like this where I play with their face and I pet them like that and I do that from the time they're a baby till they get used to it so my belief is that if you can get them used to you rubbing their face then they're gonna be fine with anything else so because I've spent so much time desensitizing them or like see at first I think it is desensitizing like you're you're making them not really react to it not really be afraid of it and over time I think they enjoy it, and I could be wrong about that. I'm, I could just be frustrating her right now, but if that's what I was doing, she would show me. She'd, like, shove off or, like, push me away or strike at me or something, but she's relaxed. She's flicking her tongue. She seems like she's having a pretty good time. The reason that boas will get a bit of a bad rep is mostly because they're a bit bigger than ball pythons. So if you were to think about a big dog and a small dog, let's say a chihuahua and a German shepherd, if you were to get bit by a chihuahua, it's not going to be that bad. 
Whereas if you got bit pretty bad by a German Shepherd, it could do some damage. It could really hurt you. So a Chihuahua bite won't end up in the newspaper. A German Shepherd bite will. When it comes to snakes, I think that's why boas and ball pythons, boas will get a bit of a worse rep. But to me, it's not really a boa or a ball python. It's more that the owner, if an owner of a, back to the dog example, if an owner of a German shepherd didn't take care of their animal properly and neglected it and you know, didn't feed it, eventually that animal would not be that happy with them and it might be more aggressive and bitey. Now, same thing with the Chihuahua, but the consequences are not as high with the Chihuahua because it's a little dog compared to a small one. So in the same way with boas and ball pythons, boas are a bit bigger and I was scared myself of boas. I thought if I got bit by one, it'd be pretty bad. When I did get bit, by about a six foot boa, what it did is it made me a lot less afraid of them because it, their bites are not bad at all. They really, like, I, I can't even see a boa doing much damage. Now, we're talking about BCI boas, and they don't usually get much bigger than eight feet. Lots of the time, it's around six to eight feet. And all my boas behave like this. Like, I would have a hard time to get Sophie to bite me. And I wouldn't want Sophie to bite me. To me, the more that I handle my animals and spend time with them and have them end up like this, that to me is success. I'm not here to come online and show you videos of snakes biting me or me scaring snakes or intimidating them. If a snake does bite me and I get it on video, it's to show you like basically a snake that's a little scared or a snake that's a little defensive. And yeah, I post videos of snakes eating sometimes, but some people want to know what it's like for a snake to eat something. And I, I'm not ever showing live feeding videos where animals are killing other animals. They're just eating, and if that's entertaining to some of you, why not? Quick side note, snakes have a brill or ocule scale that uh, covers their eye, so they have vertical eyelids underneath that scale that open up when it's dark and closed, when it's bright. Isn't that cool? Another thing that I'd like to talk about is how wonderful snakes really are when it comes to having to feed and how much they cost. Really, like, snakes are villainized so much for, oh, they kill creatures and they eat them. But when you really think about it, if you have a cat or a dog, you're feeding that cat or dog daily, and they're eating meat. When you think about yourself, most of us are eating meat, and we're eating a lot of meat. Now you compare that to one of these adult snakes, and I'll tell you, almost all my adult snakes eat once every two to every three weeks. So think about that for sustainability. Imagine like what other animal eats that little? You compare them to us, you compare them to cats and dogs, and they win. They don't waste. They don't eat as much as we do or any of our other pets do. So they're actually like the most sustainable pet you could have. To feed a snake like this, like a boa, will end up costing you about 50 to to $100 a year to feed. And what are they eating? They're eating rodents. They're eating in the wild things that would overrun. And uh, so they're helping control rodent population. And more good things about them, like they are made out of keratin. So everyone that thinks that snakes are slimy or goopy or whatever, you're wrong. <laughs> If you look at your nails and you touch your nails, your snakes are basically made out of the same material as your nails. So they're very clean, and when you touch them, they're not putting anything on you. It's actually, the opposite's happening. Your oils are spreading onto the snake, so we're the dirty one. Okay, back to boas being wonderful pets. So if you're not a little child 
and you're looking for your first snake, personally, I believe that boas are the best first snake. Because lots of people will start off with the ball python. I did myself. But when you move up to boas, you get a little bit more intelligence. You get a little bit more confidence. And there's something really special about that. It's, it's really special to have a creature like this that so many people view as aggressive, scary, and to just see it behave so sweet. Now when it's little, it's, it's okay, but when it gets like this size, it just it makes me so happy. And it's just, it feels more like you have a substantial pet. Now, they're not even close to as intelligent as dogs are. They're never really going to love you. But they do definitely like and dislike things. I like to say they're just not capable of complex emotions. But they, they definitely do, over time, learn to like you. Or if they don't like you, they'll, they'll make it known. A snake that hasn't been handled much and has just been kept kind of like a display animal and just you fed it, cleaned it, and haven't really spent much time interacting with it, those snakes probably won't behave like this. And if you get bit by one of those sometimes, like it really is your own fault for not putting that time in. There's people that say basically snakes just want to be left alone. They don't um, get anything from doing stuff like this. But that's absolute nonsense like and if you really feel that way to me you shouldn't have a pet snake you shouldn't you might as well just leave them in the wild and not have one because if all you're going to do is have it in a tank like a fish then to me any and the funny thing about that is they'll look at it like oh i'm really respecting the animal and giving it what it needs okay so to me get a fish <laughs> I think that one of the greatest things about snakes is that you can take them out and you can respectfully play with them. In t I take mine out to the park, I let them explore, and I let lots of other people touch them too and help them get over their fears. To me, that's a good thing for the hobby, and I'll continue doing that. Anytime you get bit by any snake, it's always going to be your fault. A snake is never just going to bite you because it's not your fault. You either scared it or the most common time that anyone gets bit is when they're feeding it or after they fed it. So it's called stupid feeding errors because people have made dumb mistakes. Uh, right now this behavior, me petting it, playing with it, to me there's zero risk in that. And people can say, oh, you know, it's just a matter of time until it bites you or whatever. And, you know, I've had this snake for six years. I don't think she's ever bit me. So I'm willing to risk that because even if she was to bite me, it wouldn't really do much. It would barely even hurt. Uh, this snake can't kill me. It can't kill my daughter. It can't really even almost hurt anyone. If you are afraid of this snake, like you have more reason to be afraid of a household cat or dog. Anyways, I was just hanging out today with Sophie and she was sitting here so lovely and I just figured I'd do a little video to hopefully teach you a little bit more about snakes, boas, and if you were wondering if you should get a boa, for sure. I'd say start off with a baby though. It's always better to buy a baby so that you can see its personality and know that it's nice and if it's not you can end up taming it and growing it into a lovely snake like Sophie here. If you enjoyed this or learned something please hit that subscribe button, share it with some people, flick the bell and uh, until next time have a good one. Subscribe, 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 you want to subscribe, you want to subscribe.